Welcome back to Daily Connections, and I want to welcome Santana the Alpaca into my living room as well. Now as this winter season approaches and you think about wrapping a warm fleece around you, you might want to check out the material that's used to make it. Because if you want the finest fleece around, it should come from Santana or a few of his fuzzy friends. <laughs> also joining Santana is Robin Gilmore, who's an alpaca breeder, and he's with alpacawebsite.com. Welcome, Robin. Thank you, Marina. I am so excited to have you both here. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great fun to come and see you. It is. You're just a handsome guy, you know that? Who are you talking to? <laughs> you, of course, Robin. Well, thank you. <laughs> but Santana's pretty cute. Yes, so. he is. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about alpacas and where they come from. Alpacas are uh, native to South America, Chile, Peru, and Bolivia, the high plains. Mm -hmm. So they're used to very extremes in weather, but we started importing them into this country about 25 years ago. Really? So they're used to that cold climate. Absolutely. But we have them in Florida, we have mm -hmm. them in Texas, and we have them in Alaska. So they're very adaptable. Oh, that's amazing. Huh. So just in the past 25 years, they start, what, what started making them popular? I think the thing that started making alpacas popular was their scarcity and their beauty. Now, they, they uh, produce the world's finest natural fiber. Um, that's what I'm wearing right now. That's what you're oh. wearing right now. And I know you brought a couple of other pieces with you as well. Absolutely. All different kinds, natural garments, dyed garments, beautiful, beautiful stuff, the finest garments on the planet. So their fiber is really what started their popularity in terms of importing them into the states. Absolutely. They were first domesticated about 5,000 years ago, and their fiber was only worn by the royal families. If you weren't a royal family member and you were caught wearing alpaca, you were stripped and summarily executed. Really? You're kidding. Now, he looks a little bit like a llama. That's correct. They're members all of the uh, llama family, uh -huh. um, which is part of the camel family. So alpacas are cousins to llamas, but they're about half the size of llamas and much friendlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, can, you, can you tell me why they've become such a popular choice for livestock? In addition to the fact that their fur is so nice, I know their caring isn't Compared to some livestock, it, they're relatively easy to care for? Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Alpacas are very easy to care for. In fact, it usually costs less to own an alpaca on a yearly basis than it does a dog or a cat. You're kidding me. Absolutely not. At this size, how can that be? Well, they eat grass, they drink water, they show animals and breeding animals. We, um, we feed a special mix, about a pound a day of, uh, of specially formulated feed, but it's very inexpensive and they're, uh, they're not very wasteful animals. Really? Oh, he's looking at me. Can I get a little bit closer? I'd love to Absolutely. pet him. And I understand that they're very friendly as well. Yes, they are. As a matter of fact, we just had a brand new baby on the farm yesterday. Oh. And, uh, and it was my rotation on the farm. I have a few ranch hands, but it was my rotation to sleep with the baby. So I slept on a couch with the baby on my chest all night long, and it just cuddled and cooed next to me. Really? Oh. And now that situation was because it came a little bit early. But typically, alpacas are very good moms, I heard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alpacas, her mom, this new baby's mom, is a phenomenal mom. Um, I have a couple of other of her babies, but this baby was born about three weeks premature, very strong, but just needs a little bit of extra guidance. Oh, my goodness. So this is amazing. So you mentioned um, showing them. It that one of the ways that they're being used right now in the U.S.? Or? Absolutely. Alpacas are okay. considered to be a show quality livestock. Um, as with any livestock, we try and, and breed up the next generation through selective breeding, making the, ne the next better, uh, generation better. Well, we get our grades on this by competing against our peers in the show ring. Oh, I see. So it's almost like earning a gold medal for the best of, of, of breed. Well, that sounds like the dog show, but I guess mm -hmm. it's the same thing with alpacas. But it also shows the quality in which if they had offspring. That's exactly right. The way we look at it is if, if you had a farm and, and you and I competed in the ring and we were friends, we competed in the ring mm -hmm. and... Um, you'd hear that your animal bested a Lusion Ranch animal or a Lusion beat your animal or what have you. And what that does is that helps improve the value of the alpacas. For instance, if you have an alpaca that you value at just a round number, $10,000, mm -hmm. and my alpaca beats you in the show ring, my alpaca's liable to be it worth might go more. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
Interesting. Now, talk to me a little bit about the fur, because I know that's another use. Absolutely. Um, and it, start from the beginning. They, they've got a very dense fur, I understand. Is it called fur? Also? Actually, um, it, it is a fur, although we call it fleece or fiber. Fleece. Okay. And the reason that we um, that we call it fleece is it's a little bit higher quality than you think of fur. Also, the animal is not harmed in any fashion to get the fleece or its product off. It's shorn like a sheep. Okay. Once a year before the weather gets warm, because of course alpacas don't shed, so the hair has to come off them. And this has been going on for like five thousand years. And um, it's always been considered a, a fiber of the royalty. England's Queen Victoria had her entire wardrobe made from alpaca. Really? It's that good. It's so soft. And can, can, we, can we see some of the things that you brought with me? Absolutely. Or brought with you? <laughs> <laughs> this I'd is... love to bring home with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can find something for you. <laughs> This is this is an alpaca cardigan. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like from the way the buttons go, it's probably for a man. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and um, now it's a dyed, so you typically use white alpacas to make a blue sweater because you dye the blue parts blue, and then of course it's woven. This is all handmade in Peru. One of the uh, one of the nice things that we in this country try to do is send our products to be manufactured down to Peru. So the clip would go theoretically down to Peru mm. um, and then come back into this country as garments. That's wonderful, and you're getting that original craft, that original handiwork from you know, centuries ago when they were first domesticated and their, and their fleece was first shorn. That's right. There, now, also, there is a North American fiber cooperative, mm -hmm. and we are banding together as farmers to try and create a North American fiber industry. Oh, wow. What that will do is you would theoretically be able to go to a store and buy a sweater made from the fiber of Santana. Really? All American made, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. But right now, the fleece is used just for yarn in the United States, I understand? Well, there are a number of mini mills that custom uh, uh, that, uh, that work specially in alpaca, and you'll take your, your fiber as it's shorn off the animals, mm -hmm. put it into bags, mm -hmm. clean it a little bit, shake the dust out, sure. and send it away. They comb it into what's called a roving, mm -hmm. and then spin it into yarn. Similar uh, to, to sheep wool. Absolutely. In the treatment of it. But okay. it's different from sheep wool. It's handled the same, but it's a little harder to work with, and that's why we have a North American fiber cooperative. Alpaca fiber is a very smooth fiber, where most sheep fibers are, uh, are spiky. So it's easy for those fibers to bind together, where alpaca, ah, it's very slick and smooth. That's why it feels so good it does. up against your skin. It does. And now, what's interesting is when I typically have a wool scarf around my neck, I, I'm the type of person where I start to itch and it, it's scratching me and it's bothering me. And I've had this on for quite a while now and it's not bothering me at all. Why is that? It's because of the smoothness of the fiber. Mm -hmm. So alpaca is a, is a completely smooth fiber. It's, uh, if you looked at it under a microscope, I, I liken it to a tree. If you take all of the branches off a tree, you've got a nice smooth trunk. If you take some of the branches off, you've got what wool fiber looks like. So alpaca fiber is very, very smooth, very, um, and it's very um, soft to the touch. It's also completely hypoallergenic. No one is allergic to alpaca, which is a real difference from other natural fibers. Wow, that's so interesting. Huh. All right, so I got to ask you a question, though, because um, when years ago, I lived near a zoo, and mm -hmm. I'd walk through it on my way, it was actually when I was in college, I'd walk through it on my way to school, and there were llamas there. And it used to be the joke, because they'd spit at you. Now, you said he's in the llama family. What, what's the deal with the spitting? And do alpacas spit too? Santana, are you a spitter? Huh? Actually, Santana is not a spitter. Spitting is a language that's used between alpacas. Primarily, it's used between females that have just become pregnant and the males that are looking to become their suitors. They don't have a verbal communication form. So when, really? yeah, so when the, uh, when the female becomes pregnant, she knows before all of the males know, mm -hmm. of course. Well, if the male still wants to carry on his genetic traits with that female, she'll tell him by spitting at him or towards him. And saying, uh-uh, sorry, Thanks. already uh, taken. Good to go. <laughs> <I'm> already taken. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Oh, you're kidding. Very rarely do, do humans actually got, uh, get spit on by alpacas. Normally you see it during feeding times where you're taking the food out, so you're holding the food, 
and the alpacas are looking at you mm -hmm. and spitting at their neighbors. Ah. But they're looking at you. And saying, no, my food get away. My food get away, right. but they're looking You're at you. You're the unlikely recipient of So that's right. You <laughs> get to wear the catcher's mitt. Exactly. <laughs> so we've only got um, about a minute left. So tell me a little bit about how we can, well, or about breeding. And if somebody wants to get started with an alpaca. The best way to get started with an alpaca is to either visit alpaca website to look for alpaca breeders in your area. Mm -hmm. You can send an email there and ask for breeders in your area. You can go to alpaca shows, which is a terrific idea and a wonderful segue, I might add. Ah. December 8th and 9th uh -huh. at the Garden State Expo Center in Somerset, New Jersey. Oh, will be the first annual New Jersey alpaca show and sale. Oh, so you can go see alpacas compete and the kids take their their alpacas through obstacle courses and it's just wonderful. So it's good to be able to find out things that are happening nationwide that you can learn more about alpacas and all the wonderful things they do. Look at you and your eyes are just amazing. Now how often might they breed if you have two alpacas, uh, you know, a male and a female together? Alpacas have about an 11 to an 11 and a half month gestation. Oh, okay. So the baby's going to be inside mom for almost a year. Then oh, wow. usually mom's ready to breed. And when we say mom's ready to breed, she will ask the male to breed her about 30 days after delivery. So oh. literally barefoot and pregnant. Their entire lives? <laughs> their entire lives. Once a year. Alpacas can That's have amazing. babies up until they're 17, 18, 19 years old. Oh, my goodness. Robin, thank you so much for being here today. You're and Santana, welcome. thank you so much for being here, too. <laughs>